Hello guys, in this video I will use ISPSoft to read my PLC program, which has been loaded in the previous video. As you know, this software needs COMMGR for its communication settings. So, this software will be explained too. After that, we have learned how our programs can be tested without any real PLC. Also, during the last project, I'll explain HWconfig software briefly. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to receive the latest and the greatest content. I will be posting through the channel. Alright, in the previous video, we have used WPL Soft to write, transfer, and test this simple program. Now, let me launch ISP Soft. Okay, like WPL Soft, we can create a new project inside ISP Soft to write a new program. But first, let me connect my PLC to ISP Soft. If you remember from the previous video, we need to use COMMGR software. Let me open it. After installation, if you run it one time, then its icon will appear on the right corner. Now, I can use this icon to open COMMGR software. Before working with this software, let me open ISP Soft User Manual and go to the first chapter. Note that this document can be easily found on the internet. After the first section about installing ISP Soft, let's go to the second section Introduction of COMMGR. Here we can see the relationship between ISP Soft, COMMGR, communication ports, and hardware like PLC. As you see, this software can be used to make connections between more than one ISP soft or one hardware. Now let's go to Appendix A, USB connection. Here you can see how to create a USB driver in COMMGR, but my PLC model is DVPSX2, and based on the document, its setting is a little different. I must select RS232 when I want to use the USB port. Let's back to COMMGR Soft. To create a new connection, click on Add to open the driver properties window. Then select a name for the new driver, and also select the connection type. After that, you can adjust the connection settings. Note that, usually, Default values are suitable for many purposes. So, let me click on OK. As you see, a new driver has been created here, which its state is OK. Like the previous video, let's open the communication settings window. At this time, it can be found under the tools menu. Well, here I must select the created driver. Now, ISP Soft is connected to my PLC. Instead of starting a new project, let's read the PLC program, which has been loaded by WPL Soft. So, let me click on this icon, to read the PLC program. First, I must assign a name and determine where it must be saved on my computer. Then, I can determine which information is needed. Usually, I keep all items. Alright, my PLC program has been read. Now, let me close WPLSoft, and then maximize the ISP Soft window. As you see, the ISP Soft window is similar to WPL Soft. For example, let's go to the online mode, run the PLC, and then, test the PLC program like the previous video.
Alright, until now, I've used ISP Soft and also my PLC to test this simple program. Now, let me suppose you don't have this PLC. So, how you can test this program without this real PLC? First, let's launch COMMGR software to create a new driver. Let me change the driver name. As you see, under the connection type, there are some simulators. Based on the selected PLC type inside the ISP soft, select an appropriate simulator. I must select the DVP simulator, and after that, select this choice under the device menu. Now, I must select the new driver, and click on start to change its state. Now, let's back to ISP soft, open the communication settings window, and modify the selected driver. Other steps are the same for real PLCs or simulators. To ensure there isn't any error, I can use this icon to check my program. After that, I click on the next icon, to compile the whole project. Now, let's load the program into the simulator, in another word, into the virtual PLC. Alright, the program has been transferred. Now, let's activate the online mode, and run the virtual PLC. Naturally, there aren't any real connected switches or push buttons to change digital input addresses. At this time, I can right click on digital input addresses, and use these force items. Note that, these items can be used when a real connected switch or push button is broken. Note that, when a force state is selected for a digital input address, this lock will appear, and PLC won't use the real state of the digital input address. To remove all force state, we can use release items. Alright, let me stop the virtual PLC and exit from the online mode. Note that, I've selected the DVP simulator, based on my real PLC. Now, I want to test another program, using another PLC type and its related simulator. Maybe this way is more suitable for those who don't have any real PLC. So, let me create a new project. Well, before creating a new project, we must determine its name. For this project, let me select another PLC type that supports more abilities. I can click on Browse to determine where the new project must be saved. Now, let's click on OK to create the new project. Note that, ISP Soft only displays options that can be used by the selected PLC. For example, my PLC doesn't support this item, hardware configuration. This table displays which PLC series support this item. I've selected a PLC of this series, and I don't have it. So, let's launch COMMGR to create another driver. At this time, I select this simulator. Now, let me select the new driver and click here to start it. As you see, the new driver gives me this virtual PLC. Again, let's open the communication settings window, and select the new driver. Now, let's double click on HW config. As you may know, PLCs can be divided into two groups. Compact and modular. Compact PLCs like mine, have an integrated power supply, CPU, input-output interfaces, and other components, and can be used easily. If you remember, 
I only need to determine my PLC model inside the WPL soft and ISP soft. But in modular PLCs, several components are fitted on chassis or rack with different slots. As you see, the power supply and CPU are installed on different slots, and I can use other modules on the next slots. Let's add another module. Here I can see allowable modules, which can be used beside the selected CPU. For example this module supports 16 digital inputs. Ok, you may want to add another digital input module, but let me add this module that supports 64 digital outputs. Note that, this controller type uses another addressing format for inserted digital input and output modules, which can be seen on the right side. Anyway, in modular PLCs, different input-output modules can be used. So, we need to use HWconfig software to define the PLC hardware, and then transfer the hardware configuration to CPU. Well, the desired driver is selected. Let's click on download, to transfer hardware configuration to the virtual PLC. Alright, hardware configuration has been transferred to the virtual PLC. Let's check it. Now, let me click on the I.O. module. As you see, the virtual PLC has 16 digital inputs, and 64 digital outputs. After hardware configuration, let's write a simple program, and see how it can be tested. So, on the left side, let me right click on the programs icon and select new, to write a new program. Here, I can determine a name, active or inactive the new program, and determine a password to protect it. On the right side, I can determine how it must be executed. Let's select cyclic task. So, PLC will execute the program continuously. After that, I can determine the programming language. The selected controller supports four languages. Let's select ladder diagram. Finally, I can write a comment for the new program. Let me click on OK. Now, let me write a simple program to turn on three digital outputs. Again, let me check the current program, to ensure there isn't any error. Then let's compile the whole project. Now, I click on this icon to load the program into the virtual PLC. Well, let's activate the online mode. Let's run the virtual PLC, and then open the input-output module interface. Ok, based on the program, if I activate the first digital input, then the first three digital outputs will activate too. Well, in this video, We've used ISP soft to test some simple programs with real or virtual PLCs. So, you can use our next videos to improve your PLC programming skill, even if you don't have any PLC. Now, before I finish this video, let me tell you a point about hardware configuration. Note that, when you add a module, you will able to change some settings. For example, change addresses for inserted input output modules.
but I recommend you to use default addresses. In the next video, I'll start to explain instructions that can be used by the ladder diagram language. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.